In today's video, we have a really simple wintry landscape painting with a tree, a sunset and some sparkly snow. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel we do all things watercolour as well as drawing tutorials, watercolour pencils, a little bit of mixed media, even some motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing, it's completely free. So today is actually day four of my winter landscape challenge. Now, if you don't know anything about that and you're just interested in today's video, that's absolutely fine. You can just follow along. It's just a basic watercolor tutorial. If you are interested in the challenge, we're doing five winter landscape paintings, really simple ones in five days. You can join the challenge at any time that you find this video. And basically I've arranged that with each video you can get a free downloadable PDF. It'll give you the photograph I'm working from. It'll give you a picture of my finished painting and also a full materials list, all the sizes of everything and some really handy swaps so that if you don't have the same materials as me, you'll be able to swap something else in. For example, if I'm using a color you don't own, I'll give you an alternative in that PDF. You can also watch the original video about the challenge. I'll link everything you need to know in the description of this video. And today we're going to paint a really simple tree. I know some of you are a little bit scared of trees and I used to be as well, actually. I spent years just painting still lifes and flowers. I was like, landscapes, no thank you, trees, boring. But actually, once you get into it, they're fascinating. It's really interesting. I've got some really simple tips today that are going to help you to get a nice natural looking tree. Also going to explain how to do the sunset. And because the foreground of this photograph is really quite plain, we're going to jazz it up a bit with a few special tricks to make some sparkly snow effects. So let's get on with today's tutorial. Today we're working on square paper again and uh, could this drawing be any easier? I'm simply going to start by drawing a slope down here. Now I'm not at this point going to draw the tree in any way, not even an outside shape of it and you might be uh, wondering why. The reason is I don't want any pencil to get trapped below the colours of the sky. So I'm going to paint the sky completely, allow it to dry and then do any drawing I need to do on top. I may just put the tiniest mark where the trunk of the tree is going to start. So in order to draw my tree, I just had a look at how far up the sides this part here is and how far up this side here is. So measuring this, it's probably less than a quarter between a fifth and a quarter of the height of the paper. So I placed a little mark down here and then this side is a little bit below halfway. So I placed another mark here and drew my line across. I may have curved it a little bit too much, but I don't mind it actually. And then in order to place the tree, I wanted to find out if it's halfway or a little bit more or less. So measuring from the center of the tree to the side of the paper there. And then we take that across and look at the other side. See, we've got a small gap here. That means that this is slightly over to the right from halfway. So all I did was I just found the halfway point and then just made a small mark to one side. As I said, I don't want to do any drawing here until we've got the sky in. Let's choose some colors for this painting. Now, there are a lot of colors you can use because it's so um, mild, it's so watered down. There are many different colors you could use, but I'm gonna choose some quite unusual ones actually. So we're going to choose three primaries, but then I want you to paint the tree with something unusual, by which I mean something like a strong dark brown or a maroon a burgundy, even a dark blue. What I don't want you to paint it with is black or anything too cold. We want it to look as if it's lit up. So let's go first with our primaries. For my yellow, I'm going to use this one here. So this is some talons in its Academium Yellow Light. So if I compare it, I've got a little lemon off to the side of the camera. So if I compare it with lemon, it's slightly warmer. So you want that yellow from your palette that's just a little bit warmer than lemon. There are many different ones that you could choose. Now, I only usually use alizarin crimson for things like flower painting. In some brands, it can be a rather muddy, murky color. But here I've got some Winsor & Newton and I know that it's quite a nice clean color. So I'm going to use this one and you'll see that as we blend them together, we'll be able to get some of those soft blush colors we've got in the sky. Although all of the blues and grays are very muted, I'm going to use this phthalo blue green shade, but I'll be using it in such, such tiny amounts just to mix those shades that I need. 
Finally, I've grabbed a really fun color for my tree, which I may mix a bit of blue in if I need it darker. And this is Perylene Maroon. As I said, there are umpteen different colors you could choose for your tree. I'm gonna go in with this real sort of dark brownish red. As I said, I can mix a bit of blue in if I need to. It's going to look so much more interesting than black. Now, usually with a sunset, I put the light colors in first, like the oranges and yellows, so we get them reserved and then go in with the stronger colors. But everything here is quite mild. You can see I've broken out my big brush. This is about a size 20 brush. So I'm going to use my flat brush again to apply water. And then I'm gonna go in with the paint and just try and blend it in one go and see how we get on. I'll still be starting with this yellow area here because this is where the color is pure. Once we get up here, it kind of mixes in. So we're gonna start with the yellow, add some of the crimson, and then go in with a little of the blue and blend until we get what we need. It won't matter if I need to do it in more than one layer. We'll just see how it goes. So spreading the water on. I don't know what that is I've got on there. There's always, there's always something on my paper. We're just gonna leave that alone. It's usually best just to leave things alone and not prod at them, I find. So I'm going to take that water along there. As always, wipe around the edge. This is to stop any puddles sitting at the edge and coming back on later. I've taken the water almost all the way down, but stopped just before the pencil line, simply because I can't very easily see where it is. So I'm gonna go in with my yellow here. This is the area where everything is quite bright. I'm gonna continue this color up because we'll mix it in with some pink in a moment. So I'm gonna pick up a bit of this crimson and mix this in. Now we're gonna put some blue in now, but what we have to be careful is that we don't end up with green, because apart from our Aurora Borealis, we uh, don't tend to have that color in the sky. And this is a very strong color, so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit and then allow it. There we go, I told you it was bright color. So when stuff like that happens, really just do not panic. So I've got too much water on this paper, so I'm gonna sweep around the edge here. And then I'm just going to mix in some more of the red, which will take it towards purple. And then if we want it more towards gray, we'll put a little yellow in too. It starts to look like it's going green. Red is the opposite color, so drop more red in. And I'm starting to get the effect that I want at the moment. It's gonna go down here where we had a bit of dry paper. I'd like a little more red up here. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a little wet around the edges, so let's just sweep around again just to make sure there's no water sitting at the edge under that tape. Not at all unhappy with that. I'm going to let it dry. At this point in the video, just before we continue our tutorial, can I ask you quickly to do me a favor and click that like button. You know it helps with the YouTube algorithm, as do subscribes, shares, and comments. What I'd really like is for the most people as possible to do this challenge with me. So if you could share this video with somebody you think might find it useful, or perhaps in something like a Facebook or a Reddit group where other people are looking for simple watercolor tutorials, that would be such a great help to me and to them. Your continued support helps me to keep making free tutorials such as this one. I've got some sea salt here. I'm gonna mix a color for the foreground and paint it across, and then I'm gonna sprinkle this sea salt on there. If I'm lucky, it'll make little crystallized effects that look like ice. If not, it'll just give it a bit of texture. It's a technique that's a little hit and miss, but always fun. So I'm going to start with some clean water, some of the blue. I'm going to mix in some yellow. It'll go green now. I'm going to balance it out with some of the alizarin. Now it'll go gray. We're just going to keep adjusting this until I get a sort of grayish lilac. It needs a bit more blue. To be careful with this blue because it is very strong. So you can see it's looking like a blue gray at the moment, which is not bad. I think a touch more of the alizarin. Let's test it out. Yeah, it's a bit more gray than I want it. I'm going to add more blue and more pink. So there's the blue in and more pink starting to look a little bit more lilac. Let's test it again. It's better, but actually I still want it more lilac. I'm going to keep putting in the red and the blue until I get the color I want. If it goes too dark, I can always add a little bit of water. I think at the moment it's about right. 
So it's a little darker than the photograph when I swatched it, but um, watercolour does dry lighter and I can always add a bit more water as I go along. So I'm going to sweep this colour on. You can see I've got this great big brush again, which is going to enable me to work really quickly. And there we have a splatter and another one. The thing to note with very wet paint is it splatters much more easily than sticky paint. So um, I shall paint a little slower and avoid those mishaps. It's important not to panic about things like that. Just give them a little blot. They are likely not to show much at all. And at least one of them is going to be covered by the tree. So I'm going to take this paint across here. I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it so that we can get some lighter areas. And straight away, I'm going to drop some salt crystals in. Now these will interfere with the drying. I'm going to drop a little more wet paint on them in a moment as well because I really feel that foreground is a bit too boring and what looks lovely in photographs sometimes doesn't look anywhere near as good in paint. So I think that's enough salt but as it is the paint is already starting to dry that's not going to be very effective. So I'm just grabbing some more wet paint and I'm just going to drop that around these areas which should encourage a little bit more activation around the salt crystals. Now the colours I'm using here are not particularly granulating colours so we may get a very subtle result. I'm also just going to go in with a tiny bit of neat blue paint. That'll water down a bit as it hits the other colours but I just think it'll look really quite pretty. Another option is just to drop a little clean water here and there. What we're doing here is getting uneven water levels, which is going to lead to these little tiny back runs and cauliflower shapes that are hopefully going to react with the salt crystals and give some really interesting icy results. Now, this technique takes a long while to dry, by which I mean absolutely ages. I'm actually going to leave it overnight. So the salt has dried overnight. All we're going to do now is remove it. I actually like to use an eraser and I'll do this over a trash can. And we can see we've got some really interesting marks here. I have another little trick I might try on this foreground as well later on. Now to be clear with this painting, I'm looking for more of a whimsical subject. We're not going so much for reality. You could, if you wanted to, get a whole load of, you know, rocks and business going on here and um, work further into it if you wanted to. So I'm actually filming this on a different day now. So this is next day and this is all completely dry. I'm going to do one other thing to it right at the end of the painting just to add a little bit more sparkle. But first we're going to do the tree. So I'm going to go in with my pencil now just working on dry paper. I've got this mark here where I wanted my tree to sit and so I can just start putting that in. I'll also think about how much room the tree takes up and you can see it's just over half of the height here so I can make a little mark there above. So the tree is going to come up to here and the advantage of working now on dry paper is that these pencil lines will erase really easily, those that aren't covered by paint anyway. And if they are covered by dark paint, it'll be fine. Now there's a tiny bit of snow showing on this tree. I'm not actually going to worry about it because it's so little. But of course you could do that if you wanted to. And that's my cat just asking for his breakfast, so I'll be right back. Now I've just drawn, you can see, a basic outline for where the tree is going to sit. That's all the drawing I'm going to need. Now I'm going to go in with my perylene maroon, but like I said, you could use any colour for this, from dark brown to dark grey to dark blue. I'm going to knock the colour back a little bit with some dark blue in places. But there is, you know, a slight redness to this tree. I'm just using a bit of my phthalo there. And it's going to look much nicer not being black. Now, if you can see a bruise on my arm, I do apologise for that. I am not a, uh, a battered woman. It's just I had some martial arts training last night and um, 
I was demonstrated upon by our lead instructor. So there's a game that the instructors and some of the higher grade students play and it's called cause the other instructor pain. So it goes like this. So our lead instructor will use one of us to um, demonstrate a technique on, which is sometimes uh, fairly painful. I don't usually bruise, but uh, sometimes fairly painful um, while the class looks on. And then in order to cause your fellow instructor extra pain, somebody on the sidelines will say, um, uh, sorry, Shifu, could you just, I didn't, I didn't quite see that. I'm not, I'm not sure the people at the back saw that. Could you just show us that again? And... Um, this was uh, this was done to me last night. So we all play the game. We all do it to each other. And um, there you go. F fun times. Things I do for a laugh. And I was, after many years of training, recently made an instructor. So um, extra pain for me. Of course, we're very gentle with new people and beginners. So I've got these main branches here, you know, I can just go in and look what's going on and just sort of start putting these branches on. So you notice that I do them upwards and outwards. This means they'll taper as they go towards the end. And um, Once I've built this main structure, I'll go in with a smaller brush. Now you've got options for your smaller branches. I would be inclined sometimes to use a brush like this, which is a... Um, a fan brush which I've chopped into. You can sort of sweep out with a dry brush. That works okay, but I do feel on this particular tree, I'd actually like to paint these branches today. So I've done something I don't often do. You can see how rarely I use a brush this size because it's still got the, um, got the little cover on. So once I've done these main branches, what I'll do is just go in with a smaller brush and pop the others in. So this actually doesn't take as long as you think it might take. The main thing to remember with tree branches is, is don't just curve them because they change direction in places. So they sort of go along and then they, you know, they change direction. You'll always have more branches in the center of the tree. So work in that area particularly. And as you do the outside edge, make sure it's not too uniform and too circular. You see, you want it going out in places and being, you know, having gaps in other places. And then you'll get quite a nice natural looking tree. Please excuse the beeping if you can hear it. I am making some bread. Now, as I said earlier, I'm gonna do one last thing to my picture. I'm gonna put some sparkle on it in the foreground. So I've got this Jackman's uh, Pearlescent Silver Shimmer and um, you can use any kind of shimmery paint. I've also got this one here, this Iridescent Moonstone. This is more opaque, so I want something that's gonna allow the color to shine through. And Jackman's also do all sorts of colors, but I just want to put the silver on this one. So I'm just gonna take some water. I almost guarantee you won't be able to see this very well on camera, particularly not when it dries, because for some reason, shimmer just just doesn't show up on camera. But it's worth doing because it's gonna give it a little bit of sparkle. It's also gonna soften those salt marks and just um, make everything sort of mold together a little bit better. And I'm just gonna take this right across the foreground. As it dries, those salt areas will start to uncover once more. And there'll just be a subtle shimmer as it catches the light. If you don't have anything like this, a good alternative is a sparkly powder eyeshadow. So do let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're going to take part in the challenge with me. As I said, all the details you need are in the description of this video. So do take a look there before you leave this video. And I'll see you for day five of our winter landscape challenge.